EMSM. So it's great to finally be able to participate in the forum live through one camera. In my new capacity as uh, the Prime Minister of Japan. Today I'd like to our airport addressing our brand. I'd also like to act on our effort in the artificial intelligence. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we now live in a time in which values are created through the experience of various things. This trend will further accelerate as we move into society 5.0 where cyber in the new world becomes even more great. The same phenomenon is to the self-defense forces. The self-defense forces rely heavily on ICT networks that we like to make. Let me give an example. In 2017 and 2018, the Ministry of launched and defended into satellite for the Kirby. They are going to be three satellite mission and the last bird will be print open in January in fiscal twenty twenty two. Those are the of satellite owned and controlled by the military and they support the government's joint operation by enabling information sharing. By information sharing and flexible unit operations. With this constellation, we have expanded communication bandwidth for our use. Dependency on ICT networks and cyber vulnerabilities are the two sides of the same coin. Cyber attacks are often conducted in an anonymous and covert manner. Tracking down the perpetrators are extremely difficult as they can easily conceal and disguise their identities. Moreover, it often takes time for the victims of a cyber attack to realize the harm caused to its system. These are the features that give the perpetrators the advantage to cause serious damage to target networks without dramatically escalating the tension. This is why cyber attacks are often used below the threshold of armed conflicts. According to the National Center of Incident Readiness and Strategy for Cybersecurity, or NISC, in Japan's fiscal year 2018 alone, the number of cyber attacks against the government of Japan that required especially careful handling were 202 cases. This included incident of suspected malware infections and targeted attacks. The number of incidents, 202, may seem low, but the fact is that NISC detected many more cyber attacks, or shall we say, suspicious transactions. Yet, with the advancement of cybersecurity measures taken by the government of Japan, the bulk of these attacks were guarded off and regarded as causing no harm to our systems and networks. Cyber warfare has already started and Japan is no exception to this. Another characteristic of cyber attacks is its asymmetric nature. In cyber warfare, the attacker has the overwhelming advantage over the defender. The defender needs to build a system that is based on the assumption that it will be hacked inevitably. Yet no matter how 
how cyber resilient the system is, there's only defend against a zero-day attack, which is probably the most serious threat today. Recent cyber attacks have become more and more sophisticated. For instance, cyber attacks enabled by artificial intelligence technology, such as deep fake audio, targeting cloud system, and turning IoT devices to attack internet connected home appliances could be possible. Based on the recognition that we are now facing an unprecedented threat, we need to continue to steadily increase our defense capability in the cyber domain. Accordingly, I'd like to talk about our efforts in strengthening cybersecurity capabilities of the self-defense force. We spare no effort in developing capabilities to monitor our command and communication systems and networks, as well as capability to promptly mitigate and restore damage inflicted our, to our networks. We've also made efforts in developing the capability to disrupt the opponent's use of the cyberspace in the event of attack against Japan. Within the self-defense forces, we have the Cyber Defense Unit responsible for the protection of our primary ICT network called the Defense Information Infrastructure. In addition to this, each service has a dedicated unit to protect its own network. Together, they monitor and protect our systems and networks 24-7. Cooperation with relevant domestic and international partners are also very important. Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games are likely to be prime targets of numerous cyber attacks next year. In order to best prepare for such situations, we have sent skilled members of the Self-Defense Force to the organizing committee since last April. Also, starting this October, we are helping the organizing committee with its cyber security measures to better protect its system and network. In order to maintain readiness and resilience in the cyber domain, Close collaboration with our ally, the U.S. forces, is crucial. Our bilateral efforts in the area of cybersecurity encompasses a wide range of activities, including information sharing and joint exercises. Just this August, members of the Ground Self-Defense Force and the U.S. Army Cyber School conducted a joint exercise called the Cyber Thunder to jointly hone our cyber warfare capabilities. Strengthening cybersecurity of the defense industry is also very important. It will allow for a robust industrial base for the Ministry of Defense and will benefit the manufacturers by resulting in higher corporate values. MOD is now moving forward with a plan to increase the security level of defense contractors to the level equivalent to NISD SB 800-171. We are cooperating with the defense industry to help prepare them in implementing a more rigorous cybersecurity requirement in order to attain their competitive edge in the global defense market. Cross-domain operation is key to effectively countering military threats that are both qualitatively and quantitatively superior. The modality of contemporary warfare has dramatically evolved against the backdrop of technological advancement. Modern warfare is fought not only in the traditional domains of land, sea, and air, but also in new domains including
including aerospace, cyberspace, and the electromagnetic spectrums. As I mentioned in the beginning, the self-defense forces are heavily dependent on ICT networks that run through the cyber domain. Should our systems and networks be eroded, our ability to execute a smooth and effective operation would be seriously challenged. In other words, one can easily predict that in a contingency situation, adversaries would most likely first wage a series of cyber attacks to disrupt our ICT networks and to degrade our force capabilities in the traditional domains. This is why it's crucially important that we strengthen our cyber defense posture and its capabilities so that we can fight effectively in cross-domain operation and defend our homeland. With respect to the Japan-US alliance, which is one of the pillars of our national security, our two governments affirm that a cyber attack could, in certain circumstances, constitute an armed attack for the purpose of Article 5 of Japan and U.S. Security Treaty. This clarified that a joint Japan-U.S. response against a cyber attack is possible and has great significance from the perspective of deterrence. Finally, I'd like to talk about our efforts in the application of artificial intelligence to our defense. AI is poised to transform military functions across the board. Advances in AI have the potential to significantly improve military operation, fire, rapid decision making, and complex coordination, and so on. We can expect many opportunities for AI-based cybersecurity applications and platforms. That said, like two sides of the same coin, there are both benefits and risks to AI applications in cybersecurity. Malicious use of AI technology to wage cyber attacks, such as deepfake audio, will be near to impossible to defend against by only humans. It will require the defender to also have AI enabled cybersecurity system to effectively counter the attack. It's imperative that we stay ahead of the game and to understand the trends of AI by gathering information on both the positive and negative aspects of the AI. At the same time, it's crucial that we study ways to deal with potential negative impacts of AI technology. The Ministry of Defense is currently conducting research and studies on ways to apply AI technologies in countering cyber attacks. By using AI to analyze collective data on cyber attacks, we plan to build a flexible cyber defense posture that will distinguish and automatically classify the types of cyber attack that can be dealt system systematically or require human actions. In areas other than cybersecurity, we also plan to study ways to apply AI to a wide range of areas, including intelligence, command and control, and logistics. <clears throat> so far, I have talked a lot about our cybersecurity effort, yet these efforts will remain a pie in the sky without the existence of a properly trained workforce. The current number of personnel in cyber defense unit is about 220. We are planning to increase the total number of personnel in cyber-related units to over a thousand by the end of Japan's fiscal year 2023, which will include those dedicated to each
Exchange Service Cybersecurity Unit. This is a big challenge for us, but we remain focused as it is our prioritized goal not only to recruit and train talented people, but also to take measures to retain them. The same can be said for personnel specialized in AI technology. Given the declining birth rate and aging population, we are now working on improving the salaries of our servicemen and women to maintain our defense capabilities. Such efforts to improve the treatment of personnel that will include higher financial rewards are particularly important in the area of cybersecurity. Starting from Japan's fiscal year 2018, the government has rewarded special allowances for those personnel engaged in cybersecurity. This is in consideration of the highly specialized nature of the work. We will continue to make efforts to improve the working environment for the self-defense force more active. As we work to strengthen our cyber defense posture and capabilities, I believe that the challenges we now face are similar in many ways with that of the United States. I'm eager to learn from professionals such as yourselves and to draw upon your expertise in continuing our endeavor to strengthen Japan's cyber defense posture. Once again, I'd like to thank the Boston Global Forum for having me today. Thank you very much.